Sorry, it's taken me a moment to get my act together. <laughs> Assuming I got it going. Right. Ethel, <laughs> Ethel, <laughs> don't be nice. Am I on? That's the number two, three. Am I on? Ethel. There you go. Okay. Good, good, good. So, yeah, we're going to have communion next week. A little bit different, obviously. Uh, so, we have purchased uh, all in one uh, bread and cup. And so, when you come in next week, uh, they'll be in the back, and you pick up a cup, and it will have on the top the first layer, the wafer, and after we part, later on in the service, after, and then the next pull off the, the second layer will be the juice. And so uh, you will have that next week, and then we'll have a place that you can pick up and throw uh, away on the way out, or we'll have somebody with gloves picking up. So just the best way to work with that. We haven't had communion in quite a while, and it will be a special time of reflection. I have a unique video clip that uh, Winsome showed me a month or two ago and just the issues of life and redemption of a lost world and that's what it's all about isn't it and that's for the blood of Christ and the body of Christ to be broken and so with that we uh, we will celebrate this next week this sermon I spoke last week up north at Pike Lake and it uh, was a great experience and opportunity I thought well uh, let me share it with you as well. So I started with this. Again, this came from Winsome, so if you don't like it, you can blame her. There was a pastor and a doctor and a lawyer. They're buddies. And they decided along November time that they were going to go hunting. And so they all got their guns, got their licenses, they had a place to go with four, three different blinds. And so... As they went bright and early in the morning, they truck out there, get in, get in their blinds, it's still dark, hoping and praying that a big buck comes by. So as they're out there waiting, the sun doesn't come up usually till then, about 7.30, 8 o'clock, and all of a sudden nothing, they saw nothing. A little bit towards 8 o'clock, this huge buck walks out, and they see it, and they all pick up their rifles, all of a sudden, bam, bam, bam! Three shots, the deer goes down. They all come running to the deer, and they, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> How do you know who shot it? They were struggling and arguing. Finally, DNR shows up, and the DNR comes and looks at it, and they ask, can you tell us who shot this deer? And so finally, he looked all over the deal, deer, and he saw that uh, it, uh, had, it got shot right in the ear and said the preacher shot it how can you tell it went in one ear and out the other <laughs> not too bad was it i hopefully it's not just preachers like that as we share today i hope it just doesn't go in one ear and out the other so i'm just reflecting this was kind of a camp dynamics last week uh, which were, there's no camp, so there were staffers and people from around the lake. But usually you go to something like that, and it's a little bit of challenge, and you know, be prepared as a servant and get your batteries charged. And so as I was preparing for that, I was just kind of reflecting at you know, some of those, I was on staff back 40 years of ministry, basically, myself. And looking back, a lot of friends and choices and, and and wow life is challenging and tough and especially in the christian faith uh, so i did this comparison with the martial arts so you'll see this in a moment and hence the guy tying things up there with his belt and and for the believer because i think that there's no magic formula or there's no guarantee to protect from all the different ills and ploys and issues of life that will come our way but I think there are some things that we can be very cautious of and, and, and in a sense of defense. You've heard the, the phrase, the best offense is a good defense. There's a lot of truth to that when it comes to faith. Is if your defense, if we're not just keeping uh, vigilance as it were, uh, and, and you probably remember maybe times past in your life when you were struggling and the enemy was creeping in on you. We don't like to admit that. But uh, you have to be alert and you have to be defensive or else the enemy just knows the ploy. Or maybe we 
made some poor choices, and by God's grace, we're back into his grace and forgiveness and experience his grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we learned something. And so that's the intent that we have for us today. I forgot my clicker. Hold on, please. So uh, what I would like to do is just go through seven points. Seven points sounded pretty spiritual to me. Now there's more, some comparison with what we've taught in many of you in, in self-defense and taekwondo. But you know, taekwondo itself is, is self-defense. It's not supposed to be offensive. We always train the students that if you have to protect yourself only when you're threatened, you protect yourself and get away. There is no desire to offensively harm or hurt anybody. It's to protect yourself. And the same thing, I think, in diligence in the faith, we need to be diligent in protecting ourselves. It's when we become apathetic and kind of, you know, are unaware where the enemy's schemes kind of creep in on us. We're caught unaware. Uh, that's when our defenses are down. So here's some thoughts as we look through. Uh, the first is the testings. Now, as you folks know, through the years, every couple of months we have a testing. And everybody starts out with a white belt, right? And, every, and then for as you progress along, uh, uh, I'm second degree, grateful for that. Well, there was a little bit of work and effort that came in from here to here, wouldn't you say? And you start out with the first form, as well, Sun on one has 18 moves. And as you progress to the further forms as you develop, they're more complicated, up to 82 different moves in the one form for black belt testing. And so, as I thought about that, you know, in, in the martial arts, the testing part is that you train to achieve and to learn and master aspects and move on. And the same thing, I think, is our faith, as, as the Lord will in his way and his timing. We've kind of talked about testings a lot the last few months because it's been a big test this last half a year or full year so far since 2020 and and the things that can be learned and you know when there is a testing there's not just the form you have to do you have to have a breaking technique there's sparring involved there's usually a self-defense techniques that you have to learn in the Lord's providence in our life spiritually as we prepare to go on to maturity in Christ, it will be done through different testings and trials, as we, as we know. And preparedness makes a big difference. There are a few times when people have tested. Rarely have we said you haven't, but a few times it's like, okay, yeah, you need another week or two, go home, practice, in two weeks you get to do this form in front of the class, and let's see where we go from there. Those things in our spiritual life that the Lord is teaching us, that we, we have to learn and we have to progress and be prepared for it. So some of the scriptures, uh, I put some scripture up there. Yeah, let's read it together, shall we? As it says in James, which you're familiar with, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. And then uh, a passage in, in Peter, 2 Peter, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brother affection, and brotherly affection with now that seems odd, but love is the highest virtue in the Christian faith, and believe me, it's the hardest, right? Just look at how we get along with people at times, and as to act like Christ. And can you see the progression? So loosely, you, you get it. The Lord allows the different testings. We achieve rank and maturity in faith. We shouldn't let it go to our head. And once in a while we have to go back, oh yeah, let's, let's get this form down. You, you kind of slipped a little, you forgot a few moves. There's something, son or daughter, that needs to be learned so that at the next place you'd be advanced and prepared. You need to be aware so you can see the progression. The second thing I was thinking about is evaluation. Oh, I don't like this at all. Anybody like to be evaluated? Like taking tests? Most of you aren't. Well, some of the students, it's been a little different anyway the last couple of months. 
uh, how school plays out in the fall, but you know we take tests. You guys love tests, right? Uh, evaluating how we're doing and, and ability to take critiquing and humility. So if you notice in the old auditorium the fellowship hall, there's these big mirrors. So while Taekwondo was going on, it's not that you look in the mirror and go, oh, my hair is so nice. My dobok is just beautiful. And look at me. Why are the mirrors there? It's just so you can look at your form. And often you're doing your thing and you're doing your kicks and your moves, and then you look and say, oh, I'm way, my, my shoulders are down, my shoulders aren't square. My feet are wrong. It's to evaluate your form and position because um, testing has an awful lot to do with your form. And it's a martial art. If you will, it's like a ballet. It's an art. Martial, military, but it's an art form. So the evaluation. So for us, though, i got to admit, it's hard not to, because the enemy can play on this, and we can over-criticize ourselves and have a... Um, overactive guilt apparatus. I get that. Then they're down that road. There's a balance there. At the same time, if we lose the, you know, the Lord opposes the proud and loves the humble, the openness to say, and God has a way, not all the time, but son, daughter, there's something here I want to show you. You need to correct this, get this arm right, get this right, and, and then we'll move on. I remember it testing for the second degree. Um, here, and I went to a couple other schools and was learning finesse, and, and it, there are different perspectives of different ranking um, um, leaders, but I do remember one told me this, one told me this, it, it, and I got a little, Argh. don't tell anybody I said that, but you know, I just got tired of people telling me what to do and I was doing it wrong. And then I said, he's the fourth degree black belt that will be judging me in a couple weeks. Not a very wise thing to do. Hmm? And I got to admit that, you know, at, it, as the years go by, we've had some experience and position and title or whatever it is. It's a little harder to take the critiquing, to be honest. And the Lord doesn't always do with well-intended dragons. But I think that at least we have to have... The, the receptiveness of ourselves that if we're going to keep a defense of our personal spiritual life, we have to be humble. And if the Lord is loving us and encouraging us and to point something out, we have to be able to hear a still small voice rather than, I know what I'm doing, don't get in my way kind of stuff. So here's some verses that we share with that as we evaluate the scriptures. Read them with me as Paul to the Corinthians. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith Test yourselves, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test. Now, there's a lot of different ways of looking at that, but you get that idea. Of there's an appropriate place for self-examination. We do it at communion time, especially, because in Corinthians, they were eating and drinking unworthily, and they were... Uh, it, was a, it really was a holy moment, and they needed to assess themselves. Another, as, as David in 139, read with me, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. I know that there are extremes one way or another, and we can overdo it if we're the enemy's really good at criticizing and tearing us down. But at the same time, we have to be, we, we want to come before our Father and, and, and say, Lord, I'm here, I'm listening. Speak, your servant listens. And that we have at least a, a, a defense of becoming a hardened heart is the openness to hearing what the Spirit has to say for us. So we've had testing, we've had evaluation, foundation, the foundations, the ATA, there are four major stances that we teach. Front stance, middle stance, uh, side stance, back stance. And uh, well, it's kind of fun as we go along. I think Josh is kind of the worst at this when he, he no, he's very good at it. But we're, uh, we go with it. <laughs> uh, more often than not, as a person's 
practicing over here, they're, they're doing, they're gonna do 10 front stance back and forth with low block. And as they, they just kind of get haphazard and their feet kind of get all over the place, and then we can just walk up to them on the side and just and push them right over. Why? Because they, they got their feet all messed up. They didn't have a good solid stance. It's not stable, it's not secure. They're easily, whether they fall over, they stumble. And you know, you can do all the cool moves you want. Jump and kick and scream and holler and break and do all these fantastic things. But if you can't land properly on your feet, what good is it? You gotta have the fundamentals of the firm foundation and where your feet are planted and it's solid and secure. And so that's, we kind of drill that you can do this sports analogy, if you will, or music, but the foundation. So in our faith in Christ, we want to make sure we understand the scriptures and this foundation to have a firm foundation in Christ. And especially when uh, so much in our nation and world, I mean, it's, we shouldn't be surprised, but lack of truth in what is people discern is truth and what is not truth. And how else do we know other than the word of God and the firm foundation? And if we don't have this firm foundation, is Christ deity, is he God? Is the scriptures infallible? Are they authoritative? Do they speak with authority into our life? Or do we choose to use it in a different way or interpret it in a different way? We need the foundations to keep it secure. So here we go with our wonderful uh, Awana verse. Together, all scripture is green. Uh, no, this is ESV. It's just a little different slant, but I like it. It kind of gets us a new perspective. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. That's the foundation. The next thing we're going to look at is garden. Uh, Josh and Lisa can attribute to this as well. See, they didn't know they were going to get picked on today, but that's okay. I'm pulling them in because it's a cooperative effort here. Uh, when we spar, two or three minutes into it, inevitably, what happens, especially to the younger students, keep your guard up, keep your guard up, keep because they just kind of forget or they're tired at the end of the service and they just kind of keep, you gotta keep your guard up. We're always telling them, keep your guard up. Or if they think they're super cool and they're trying to be Ali and float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, I can get my, you keep your guard up, why? Because you're covering your face, you get hit in the face and the neck, it's very detrimental. Doesn't feel good, by the way. So uh, this concept of guardedness, as I think about that, we need to keep our guard up. We need to be aware that the enemy, and we'll look at some verses in a moment, is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he will catch us at our weak moments. Now, again, balance, extreme paranoia, and something gonna jump out at you behind every rock or tree, that's not where we are. We have peace with God. At the same time, the scripture talks is about the enemies. The enemy's been around for thousands of years. He's incredibly powerful. He knows your weak, he knows your family weakness, your family line for generations before. He knows what buttons to push. He knows to set the trap. He knows exactly where to set something up. So we just need to be aware of it. We don't stay in the house and hide, but we need to keep our guard up. One of the things I remember, I think it was Josh that was telling us is that in, in our style of Taekwondo, uh, they do a lot with sticks, shorter sticks, long sticks. Uh, they're sword, but going back a couple hundred years, in Korea, when there was a dominant force, often the Chinese were uh, invaded uh, people in Korea, because that's where Taekwondo came from, uh, they, didn't, they took away all their swords, so they didn't have swords. I mean, if you had a sword, great, but if you had an oppressor, what are they gonna do? They're gonna take away the weapons, so they take away the swords. So what did the Korean people do? They used to defend themselves with the common everyday things. A staff, a short staff, a long staff. Uh, don't, you know, the nunchaku and nunchucks, you know, the two pieces of wood with a rope between them. You can use those out in this field. You can be out in the field, you can be digging that, you can be beating and, and cleaning a rug or something. It's not a weapon, but if you got 
if the enemy came upon you, you knew how to use what you had in your hand to defend yourself. And so that's, that was just a neat thing to understand. We have to know the word of God. We have to keep our eyes up and be alert because of what he hinders us. Now, often, too, again, when we go through, we'll, we'll go through practicing and practice like high blocks. Inevitably, I'll come up to our students and they're going, none of you ever did that, right? Just get another high block, another high block. So I'll come up to them and fake like I'm going to bean them on the head. And they'll have a high block there, but of course, inevitably, it's not high enough. It's about here. So when you hit them, it's like that, right? And it doesn't have any, any support. So I'll just I'll intentionally look like I'm going to hit their head so that they put it high enough to defend their head, let alone with some strength behind it. So if they really ever had to defend themselves, they'd have the strength to do it rather than just going through the motions. Anybody ever just go through the motions? Huh? That we have our moments, and there are times you got to catch your breath, but be on your guard. And so not to frighten us, but at the same time, just to be aware the enemy is a roaring lion. So here's some scripture. Let's read together. Be sober-minded, be watchful. The adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, resist him. Again, this is not to encourage paranoia. Because we're redeemed children of God. Holy Spirit living within us. We have victory over death and victory over the enemy. But we need to be aware. We need to keep our guard up. And this is from Proverbs. More than just externally, the area that the enemy works more diligently for greater harm is what's going on in here and here. And uh, ESV has a different way of looking at it, but uh, from Proverbs, it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Of all things, guard the heart. It's the wellspring of life. We talk about hardened heart or a sad heart and a bruised heart, and we all get those concepts, but we work on guarding our heart because from it flows life. Number five is training. So I hopefully after today, Josh and Caleb and all call us out there to practice because I haven't practiced since February. <laughs> it wouldn't be pretty. You know, falling all over the place and I forget song on one, the first form. Oh yeah, start out with a high block, right? No, was that a low block? What was? And, and it, the humanness sets in, maybe a few years, but you gotta forget things, let alone you're out of practice. And so the aspect of what this is in our spiritual life is that there are times, yes, we need to catch our breath, but the Christian life is, is a dynamic faith uh, interaction with our Heavenly Father. It is, we need to continually be worshiping and training and preparing ourselves or else we just fall back and not only are we not alert and guarded, but we're just out of shape, spiritually speaking, and even more vulnerable, if you will. Uh, the, the body has muscle memory. We use that often in class. You're, 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 you'll learn, your muscles will know where to move and how to do that with practice. And so in our faith, as we practice, we don't want to lose the technique of coming before him and praying and times with him and interacting before our Heavenly Father and petitioning and, and worshiping and serving and, and studying and hearing from heaven and responding. That should be a continual thing, maybe hopefully on a daily basis that we're interacting with, um, not, well, uh, this just came to mind, he's our trainer. Huh? And we're a trainee. He's, he's the one that guides and directs us through his word and, and is instructing us. And, you know, just like a musician, if, uh, if, if there's a big event uh, that we're preparing for, you, you've got to practice. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I can, I can, you know, when we play here, it's wonderful that, you know, I can do a couple times in the week and be ready and not blow it too much on a Sunday when I play with him. But if you got a solo or it's a big event, you got to put your time in. 
you got to keep the diaphragm, the lips up, and all of that. We've got to put the time in to keep to be diligent. And so we have to find that where we maintain a degree of which that we're vigilant and continue to train and not just sit on a shelf and kind of collect dust. Here's some scripture that talks about our training in Christ. Paul to Timothy, the young pastor, together, train yourselves for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness of value in everything, in every way. He goes on to say, practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress, keep a close watch on yourself, and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now this is Paul to the young pastor Timothy in his practice of ministry as a young pastor. At the same time, is we got to practice, practice. You've heard the adage, uh, practice makes perfect. It doesn't. <laughs> perfect practice makes perfect. Because what happens if you practice the wrong way of doing it? You're going to continue to do it wrong. It doesn't matter if you do it a dozen times or 200 times. If there's a lick of the air and I get it wrong and I practice it wrong and haven't relearned it, which is really hard sometimes, you're going to play it wrong. And so perfect. So we practice our faith. Oh, if you think about that, how do you practice your faith? I think that's another sermon someday. But how do we live out our faith? <coughs> I got a brilliant idea. I'll have to add, or maybe I'll ask what your insights are. So training is an important thing. Two more parts, respect. Now this seems a little different, but in Taekwondo, rank uh, is recognized with authority and appreciated. Uh, when you come into a practice, you go into the building and you bow going in to the worship. And at that way out, you bow going up. When you start a practice, you bow to the instructor. Afterwards, you bow to the instructor. You respect the rank, you respect what they're going to say. Can you imagine what would happen if a white belt started lipping off to a black belt? Huh? Well, it's happened occasionally once in a while, but generally not necessarily in our schools, but it doesn't happen again. <laughs> because they're soon instructed that someone's the instructor and the other one is the one who's being instructed, especially if they're low rank. Even when there's a major testing, like at Grace, and the senior, you know, there are, I don't know, fourth or fifth degree black belts in Michigan, they come as guests. When they enter, everybody stops and bows to the ranking um, black belt as they come in because they may be fifth or sixth degree they're respected now it's it's Asian oriental it's a martial art that's the influence but I tell you it does something for following directions and uh, so with that in mind I I don't want to overplay the concept that we're just we're just uh, meek and mild wet and noodle always responding to God and I'm nothing and you're everything. That's, that's not what God, God says, I'm your, you're my kid, I died for you. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're gonna rule and reign with me. Don't let anybody take that from you. But guess what? I'm God, you're not. And so understanding that, I think we ought to have a healthy respect for who God is. So when we come into, yeah, there's times you pour out your, your, your fears, your concern, yes. And, and, and there are times in scripture you just have a moment with God. He's got big shoulders. He said, I knew that was coming. <laughs> and I know how you feel. I'm going to work through this. Now you got it off your chest. Let's move on. But God's God. All those that met God fell on their face and were overwhelmed. Woe is me for I am undone. Holy, holy, holy. God's God, and you and I are not. And so with that, here's uh, Proverbs addresses that together. Let's read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Also in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, 
and the knowledge of the Holy One is inside. Now this fear is not, but it's a holy, reverent respect for, it's not appropriate to say God's a black belt or a tenth degree, but you know what I'm saying? He's God, and we're not. And if we, if we lose that, that awe and reverence for the name and who he is, See, that, that's a hole in our armor. That's an area the enemy can get in because pretty soon we're kind of calling the shots. Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ, hours before the cross, has a humbling statement in Gethsemane, not my will, but thine be done. I mean, that's, isn't that overwhelming? He, he knew exactly what was going to happen. Sweat, tears of blood. It, and, and we may not be called to do something quite as dramatic as laying our life down for Christ, but we serve, not my will, but thine be done. There's got to be that respect. God, you call the shots, you rule and reign in my heart, in the throne room of my mind. I'm listening. We may have our moments, and you may just salute the, salute the uniform, and inside you're, but he's God. And so we have a proper respect and authority. The last thing today is the pledge. For lack of a better word, uh, when we do a, a practice out here, we always start out at the beginning. Say, I practice with the spirit of Taekwondo with courtesy for fellow students, loyalty for my instructor, and respect for my juniors and seniors and sir. So it sets the tone. We're here to practice in the spirit of what we're doing with courtesy and loyalty and respect. And then we conclude, I live in the perseverance. In other words, what we've learned, what we've learned here, because we're teaching people defense and also that they could do bodily harm to someone if needed. I will live with the perseverance of the spirit of Taekwondo, having honor with others, integrity within myself, and self-control of my actions, and then serve. Seems appropriate for a Taekwondo school and going out into the world as it were, but for us as a believer, I like that concept of a pledge, an oath, commitment. Now, we've talked about this on and off through the years, but what's faith? Faith, again, I like this definition. Faith is a commitment of loyalty and allegiance and commitment to God. Unseen, although by faith we believe, it's our allegiance, it's our commitment, it's our loyalty. So, when we come privately before him, why not? Like it says we're gonna, in, in Romans chapter 12, when we present our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, when we present ourselves to him and, and start the day with this concept, appeal to you therefore children by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. I know that Dave has mentioned that from here. You get that kind I mean, imagine a stone altar and, and a sacrificial animal put on it. That's what Paul's saying here. We, we, we give ourselves as a holy sacrifice to God to be used in him. It's kind of vivid, but then Jesus said, pick up the cross and follow me daily. And so we willfully do that. And we respond, because then it says, well, also with that, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, it's ongoing, by the renewal of your mind, that by testing and by discernment, what is the will of God and what is good, acceptable, and perfect. May I encourage you to, as we, as you have your private worship and time, and, and every day, this pledge of allegiance, if we pledge the flag, I pledge allegiance. We haven't had too many ball games, or at least we can go to, and who knows what the fall will be. But what are we, isn't that a wonderful thing? We pledge our allegiance to the American flag, the Fourth of July, we do. We're American, people lived and died for it. Christ lived and died for us, we pledge our allegiance to him. There's some interesting parallels there. I hope that's something that we can look at it in a daily thing. So as we kind of wrap up today, uh, found something I had to dig out early this morning. <laughs> you remember my Charlie Brown?
Christmas tree. I haven't used that for a few years. That was given to me. And, uh, you know, it's often a reminder. And if you remember the Charlie Christmas Carol and the story there, and he's, you're the Charliest of Charlie Browns or something like that, his friend tells him. And it's just an ugly tree that he picks up, brings back, and he's mocked for. And then you'll remember the scene, though, when the kids come around it and they put all kinds of ornaments on it and pulls back, and it's a beautiful, beautiful tree. I share this with us, uh, yes, because it's Christmas in July, but again, a reminder of who we are in Christ. I mean, we're, we're just an ugly tree that's trying to be decorative and doesn't come close through the filling and enablement of the Spirit of God as a new creation in Christ. The old has passed away, the old and the new has become. We're adopted sons and daughters of God, sanctified, declared holy, uh, given a mission to accomplish with spiritual giftedness. We become a beautiful person in Christ. Satan loves to get us back to in our, in our mental thinking, in the sense, if you will, that we're just a nobody and not being used of God and don't have the abilities, we don't look nice. He's dismantling. Now, imagery, yes, and whether you're Christmas tree or not, but the beauty of it. In Christ, we're a beautiful creation, ongoing, transforming, renewing of our hearts and our minds. So I share these things with you this morning uh, just because I think it's important for us to, to just always be aware there's no magic answer or formula for our for people not making poor mistakes and falling from the faith. We all know people that have done that, and we pray for them. And we had mentioned before that October, and I haven't figured out how we're going to do that, instead of October Prayer Fest as we've had, we're going to pray for prodigals. And we'll figure out how we're going to do that this, and and. Pray, but it would be wonderful to see the Spirit of God work in people's lives. And uh, that would be a great thing and an opportunity for us to pray. At the same time, our efforts in defense of our spiritual well-being in Christ, there's means to do so and not and put on the full armor, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword, the word of God, and the shield of faith, to take our stand. Because as the scripture said, it is uh, the, well, not the scriptures say. <laughs> I'm not going to attribute that. It actually is that I can't remember the gentleman's name who uh, had written that book on warfare. as a Chinese gentleman hundreds of years ago. But it, it really or originated with him. Our best defense is a good, a best offense is a good defense. And I think in the, the life of Christ, it's not as if we're, we're cowing back and getting back in the corner where we haven't succumbed yet. When Jesus says, I will build my kingdom and the gates of hell will not overcome or press it, it's not as if the gates of the, you know, God's kingdom is pressed in the corner and just not about to surrender, but that the gates of hell, the kingdom of God is going to advance and blow over the gates of hell, which he did, that the, the dead in Christ came and that he won victoriously. And so that's who we are in Christ and to maintain that. Father, as we reflect upon this uh, great provision and the, all that has been provided to us through your divine will, the word of God that sustains and enables us, the uh, spirit within us and uh, the body of believers in godly counsel and worship and prayer, you you have for thousands of years used your people to advance the kingdom. We are weak, we are frail, uh, we have uh, all kinds of setbacks, and yet you restore and rejuvenate and renew our hearts and minds. And so with that, Father, we ask that you would bless and encourage hearts today that uh, you would uh, give, give encouragement and courage uh, to where meet, meeting the challenge of the day and the week as the enemy is so good at presenting schemes and uh, lies that distract and discourage. Thank you for your graciousness to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to sing a hymn 74. 
a we often call it the battle hymn of the republic or mine eyes have seen the glory we'll just stand and sing the first verse mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the lord he is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored he hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword his truth is marching on 74. 